Good morning and welcome Petro Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday, uh, the second day of July. Yeah, the second half of the year has started and uh, the year of chaos and boy, it is certainly living up to that billing. We got a, a hurricane, a big one in the, I guess in the Caribbean right now. Let's just, let's I'll just say this. Pray that the high pressure stays. Uh, We'll know more in the next day or two. Uh, It's either just going to smash right into Mexico or it's going to take a right turn and head right into Texas. Uh, If the high pressure breaks up, uh, then it's six. Right now, I think it's like 50-50. They they don't know. Crude oil has hit $84 a barrel. It's going to go higher than that. Uh, they've been warning about this hurricane season, and, and already uh, the first Category 5 storm of this year, the earliest Category 5 storm on record uh, as the water temperatures are hotter than normal, which, of course, means that the storm's got more power. Uh, and, and and I think it's going to be, you know, one of those days you're going to wake up and go, what happened? Why why, why is gas $4? Why, 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 you know, some places, why is it $5? Well, because remember that genius idea that Joe Biden had? Of course, genius and Biden probably don't go together, right? Words that don't go together. Genius Joe Biden, uh, they they tried to pretend that inflation wasn't that bad and emptied out the strategic oil reserve. And, of course, we have record low inventories. Bought everything, right? Diesel fuel, record lows. Gasoline, record lows. Jet fuel, record lows. Actual oil and, and reserve at record lows. So any of these storms, you, you know... It's going to take out some production. We know that. We know that if we get unlucky, how many refiners could go offline with just one storm? Uh, So I'll just say this, Jason. I I think we're going to see uh, much higher elevated oil prices kind of foiling the party for inflation Uh, as uh, it looks like maybe these weather guys got it right this year because they've been saying for a while it was going to be a a record year for hurricanes and the power of the hurricanes and already uh, you know we we already have our first one yeah we'll see what happens as the season uh, gets a little further in but uh you know, these things could be they're supposed to be unpredictable right so we'll, we'll we'll see if it does go where you say towards mexico or not but uh we'll you can only react to what actually happens so we'll uh we'll, we'll talk about what might happen but uh we, we, until something actually happens there's not a whole lot to fear or worry about but uh you're saying uh hey this could be a, an ongoing occurrence in the weeks to come you know it's going to be funny we, we uh, we're so tomorrow's going to be our last show we won't know until probably Thursday or Friday when we're off, whether or not it's going to take that right turn. If it takes that right turn, uh, Monday could be very interesting uh, when, when uh, depending on, uh, on the turn, how many of the oil establishments will be in, in harm's way. But we'll wait to see uh, again. It's it's funny, but uh, yeah, we're hoping for the high pressure here. But again, we keep telling you, the year of chaos. Any unexpected shock, just about in anything now, right? They remember Coco, right? Coco went crazy. Well, well, we had a shock, right? Then, then we had, what was it, like 10, 10 went crazy. Well, we had a shock, right? And, and, and we're talking, we're having all kinds of people coming out talking about Ill- illiquidity in the treasury markets yesterday. A massive move up in treasury yields because lack of liquidity and i get it it's a holiday week right a lot of people hey let's face it if you're really rich you're already gone right yeah we're out i'm taking the whole week off i'll I'll, I'll be back later uh and jason these are the things that i think most people are probably unprepared for it's going to be 
the shocks to the system. And, and now uh, it's one thing when, you know, some commodity, okay, that was a shock and that price shot up and or that price shot up. But when we're talking about the treasury markets, when we're talking about the stock markets, though, that's when chaos ensues, right? That's when things get really, really painful. And this is why we keep talking about you've got to be the most diversified you've ever been. Get your gold and silver put away. Our, our toll-free number, 800 951 The website, at allamericangold, uh, allamericangold.com. And you know it's funny? There was an article out talking about uh, financial plans and, and uh, investment guys and how many of them now are saying that at least for them personally, oh, yeah, we, we've got gold. I don't know if they're... Uh, necessarily telling that to their clients, but 85% of the people that surveyed, pet, these are professional investors, okay? So these guys, they're licensed, right? They, they've, they've taken the classes, they've gone to the schools, they've done all of those things. They got their Series 6, Series 7, uh, 61, 65, 66s, all, the, all that stuff. 85% of them have gold. And you know what's funny is I, I remember back when I started in 2003. People were like, what are you doing that for? Right? Gold? Who buys gold? Wow. Have, all, have things changed in the last 20 plus years, haven't they? Paper Radio News Hour. Be your own professional investor 800 Joe and Jason Patriot News Hour here on Tuesday tomorrow's our last day then we're off for the 4th of July holiday on, on Thursday and Friday but don't worry you can always go out to the website you know I'll just say this if you realize that hurricane's taking a right turn get on allamericangold.com buy, buy, buy some gold and silver that's all I'm going to say but you can do what you want. Looking in at the markets today, and we, we thought this would be a pretty boring week. So far, I, I, I'm going to say yes to that. The Dow's down 20. The S&P's up 4. The Nasdaq's up 40. Uh, the 10-year note uh, at 4.45. So I almost got to 4.5 yesterday. Remember, 10-year note's been like high 4.2s, uh, low 4.3s, and then liquidity problems hit the market uh jay powell was talking today you know telling them, oh yeah well, we, you know we, we made a lot of progress on that inflation stuff uh still need to see more before we start cutting okay whatever you say uh crude oil right now uh, like i said it touched 84 dollars right now about 83 and a half brent crude almost 87 dollars uh gold just Real boring today, been boring. It was up a few dollars yesterday, very flat today. Uh, you know, it's off about a dollar here, right right hanging around that 2330 level. Silver, silver's having a nice little day here. Uh, again, bumping back up closer to that $30 level in silver. But as you guys know, listen, we're not preparing for tomorrow. We're not preparing for August or September. We're not preparing. We're not waiting for the election. Please don't wait for the election. That's not going to change anything. I feel bad for whoever wins. That's I, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Whoever it is, Trump, Biden, some other person that they throw in there at the last minute, I don't know. But I feel bad for them because they'll get blamed for it. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. Get the most diversified you've ever been. You know, and, and, and like I was saying, I've been doing this a long time now. And it used to be kind of a joke. Right? Because, you know, we, we believed the banking myth that these guys knew what they were doing. And, of course, we saw the dot-com bubble crash. Then we saw the financial crisis. 
And really, they showed their true colors then, didn't they? Right? What did they do? Did they own up to it? Did they give tough medicine? Did they go and break these banks up? Did they arrest anybody? I mean, Bernie Madoff is the only guy that, you know, right? right? I mean, that, that guy was running a Ponzi scheme. I mean, complete Ponzi scheme. He wasn't even trading anything. But they didn't, did they? What did they do instead? They printed more money than the that more money than the entire world had printed ever before all combined you know we talk about debt going to the moon and back i mean they they did crazy stuff left interest rates at zero for 15 years zero heck they were talking about maybe going negative they wanted to go negative that's why they got to get rid of the dollar guys they didn't fix anything matter of fact you know what i shouldn't say that because they did you know what they did they changed all the rules to all the contracts you have. Contracts on your bank accounts. Contracts on your money markets. Contracts on your 401k. Contracts on your IRAs. They changed them all. Well, gosh, I didn't see it, Joe. I didn't see it. They didn't send me a personal. They didn't call me personally. Because they don't do that. You know where it was. Bear it on the back of a statement in print that, let's face it, most of us, you know, sorry, by the time you're, you know, sophisticated enough to have IRAs and 401ks and all that stuff, right? You can't even read the small print. Right? We can't even read. got to get a magnifying glass to read that stuff. And, and, of course, it's written in a way you don't even really know what they're saying. Check out our friends at Y Refi. Why? Because you're going to get a great fixed rate of return. Right? You want stuff to grow. Hey, up to 10.25%. Not bad. Not bad at all. And guess what? It's not correlated to the stock market. Because you know. You guys know, right? You do understand the bubble's getting ready to burst. And I'm talking about the treasury market bubble. The biggest bubble of them all. Get protected. It's not correlated to Wall Street, not correlated to the Fed. Just check them out. You got to have at least 50K. Don't have 50K. They can't help you. But check them out. InvestYRefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R E F Y.com. You know what? Or just call them at 888 YREFI24. Now, we've been talking a lot about. The importance of holding physical gold and silver, right? And how you can really protect yourself. How much of your wealth do you want to risk? That was the thing on Friday. On Friday's show, that's what we kind of asked everybody. How much of your wealth are you willing to give to these guys? Because they, they've rewritten all the rules. As I just said, they've written all the rules. They're going to take it all. They're going to take it. Right? Serfdom is coming. And then you hear this stuff about these financial advisors, these professional advisors. And every one, you know, 88%, so 9 out of 10, this is more dentists than the people that like dentine gum. Or is it Trident? I can't remember. Whatever one. <laughs> Whatever the 4 out of 5 dentists, 9 out of 10 professional advisors, they have gold. Now, some of them say, well, I got 1%. 24% of them say, I've got at least 3% or more. Of course, a lot of them have a lot more than that. And that's, uh, again, I that's not going to help. Over 25% of the respondents, this is almost like central banks now, say that they're going to increase their gold allocations over the next 12 to 18 months. By the way, that was more than the double, more than double the amount that said that they may lighten up their gold. I'm going to tell you right now, none of them are going to lighten their gold up. Just tell them. But here's what was really interesting, because this is the World Gold Council, right? They're the ones that do this stuff. They said North American investors 
seem the most likely to increase their gold holdings over the year ahead. So the American professional investors, see, they know already. The good ones already know. They said it's, they recently, I love how it's recently, they've recently flagged gold is historically under-owned in the United States. And they said there's a lot of headroom in supporting a positive outlook for gold ownership. And Jason, you know, where are we? You know, it used to be, like when I started, less than 1% of the population owned any gold or silver. I think that's grown, right? But, but what are we talking about? 3%, 5%? The vast majority of Americans don't hold it yet. But I promise you, that is fixing to change. Here, here's what really is something. I know Jason touched upon this a little bit. According to the numbers, 60% of the professional respondents said gold tends to deliver less than sparkling returns compared to other assets. Okay, so 60% of them in their minds, oh, well, gold, yeah, you know, there's other things that can do better. Because that's always what they've said. Oh, well, you know, if you, if you put it all into NVIDIA stock, well, then, yeah, you could have done better. But here's the reality. The reality is gold has perform, outperformed almost all asset classes over the last 25 years. So go back to 1999. In fact, gold has averaged over 8% returned every year for the last 25 years and it's actually outperformed equities over that time. And Jason, this is something that, that you've talked about before, right? Where, you know, to, you know, picking these dates, but you, gold over the course of time, especially once the debt myth fell apart, as soon as we weren't going to be able to pay off our debts in 2010, right? The fake budget surpluses of the Bill Clinton heirs, As soon as all that came to an end, all of a sudden, gold's been the best performing thing out there over the last 25 years. It's done really well, Joe, and I don't know if that's uh, a good thing uh, for Americans because gold is uh, a commodity. It's uh, savings. Uh, if, if something that naturally occurs becomes the best place to put your money as a savings vehicle, for the last 25 years, that's, that's good for savings. But, but Joe, I mean, there are like companies and, and, and businesses and investments of all different types, shapes. And you would think over 20, last 25 years, there'd be things out there. I mean, I, I guess the stock market is looked at as a whole. So the stock market as a whole doesn't perform as well as gold in 25 years. I'm sure there's some individual stocks inside of there, companies that probably would outperform as investment but it's, it's kind of sad to say that uh, as, a, as, as a whole, the stock market and, and other types of in, uh, investment classes aren't outperforming gold, something that is, uh, sits there and protects you from inflation and from all the games that the government plays uh, with their, their buddies, the central banks, and then uh, their corporate owners. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a statement to say that gold is outperforming everything else. Uh, it shows you the lower standard of living has been happening these 25 years. And I think we're just quickening that situation. The ne- next few years, we're going to see, we're going to see gold really perform well. And we're going to see the lower standard of living even intensify further, Joe. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. The education that these professional investors are getting, because I'll, I'll be honest with you in 2003, I don't know that any of these guys had gold. Maybe it would have been single digits, right? Less than 10% of them would would have even had any allocation to gold. Now, 88%. 
60% still think that they can do better other places. Of course, that means 40% realize, hey, gold's actually done pretty good. Matter of fact, over 20% of the respondents acknowledge gold delivers excellent long-term returns. The survey also noted that uh, some of these professional investors fail to grasp the liquidity of gold. For those that don't have exposure to gold, and these were these professional investors, they cited liquidity as a major reason that they don't hold it. And Jason, gold is so liquid, right? Yeah. People just, I think people are shocked at how easy it is. They're like, it can't be that easy. It is that easy. I mean, just just, uh, just to give you an idea, just the trading volume in gold, okay? Just a day. Just one day. It's over $160 billion a day. It is a huge thing for those that own it. 800-951-0592, Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour here. Uh, one more day before we wrap up the week for the 4th of July weekend. But very interesting report out of the World Gold Council uh, about professional investors. So this is a follow-up. Right. Remember the World Gold Council's report on central banks, right, which was even more bullish about gold. But I think that's a really uh, it's a positive thing. More and more and more of them are figuring out it's taken a while. Right. They, they wanted to believe that the debt markets were the place to be. And maybe they were right. Maybe they were at certain moments in time. But now we face right a level that we're struggling now to convince people to buy it and and that's the big worry because when we get to the point listen there's going to be buyers that's just my opinion there's going to be buyers but at what cost I think the era of, well, we're going to lower rates and all of a sudden the 10-year note's just going to, you know, go to half of a percent again. I think that's over. Right? Look at what happened just yesterday. That was just one day. And yields shoot up. That's my fear, that we're going to have to pay 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 percent to sell all of the debt because it's a runaway train right now. There's no stopping here. Uh, there's nobody that n- neither guy talked about deficits at the debate. There's no plan to actually cut any type of spending. No real plan anyway. There's a lot of fake plans, right? A, remember, remember the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes, it's the Inflation Reduction Act. Okay. That would require less money printing. Because what is inflation? Most people say, well, that's rising prices. No. Inflation is printing money out of thin air. What happens is prices rise when you do that. You do that too much, and all of a sudden, everybody wants more. Well, guess what? The Inflation Reduction Act... They actually spent, what, $2 trillion more trillion more and try to tell everybody, Jason, right? Janet Yellen was the one, oh, yes, it's, it's going to make inflation. We're going to spend money to make inflation go lower. It doesn't work that way. And unfortunately, we're starting to find out. We haven't felt the big of a – see, this is like uh, – you know, I, I liken it to the, the, the little earthquakes you get, like, in California and stuff. You know, and it maybe shakes a little bit. You're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go. I'll go back about my business. And then one day, like the big one hits. Remember that the World Series was going on in Oakland. The, the stadium had a big crack in it. And there was fires everywhere. That's what's getting ready to happen. 
You know, it's interesting. The uh, Inflation Reduction Act seems to do nothing but add to the inflation. You know, you have all these things that we have. The, uh, the war on terrorism, you have more terrorists, right? You have, you have the uh, the war on poverty. Go back to the 60s, the war on poverty. Now you have more people living before the, below the poverty line. Uh, we, you have these guys that go to the other countries to, to, to fight against dictators, right? And they call them freedom fighters. Well, what are they fighting? <laughs> it, it seems like the name is always in whatever is actually in jeopardy. And uh, so the, when I first heard the Inflation Reduction Act, I was like, well, they're spending money. They're doing the opposite. Uh, and I mean, I guess that reverse psychology works on the average tr channel surfer guy yep. that's on his cell right, phone all day. But surfer, yep. Yep. Not for somebody yep. thinking. Somebody who's thinking knows that that was a bad idea from the from the beginning. Well, Jay Powell's out talking right now, saying that they've made a lot of progress in inflation. If you're uh, somebody out there that you uh, spend a lot of money on stamps, you better go get your forever stamps uh, because starting on July 14th, the price of a first class stamp will go to 73 cents. By the way, that's an increase of more than 7%, right? So they raised the price last year. Uh, now they're going to go from 68 to 73. And by the way, the post office wants everybody to know starting July 14th, prices for all services will rise more than 7.5%. Percent. So, uh, Jason, I know the Fed is telling us that oh. inflation somewhere around three uh, percent, but the post office is saying, "Well, how about seven and a half?" What is that? Uh, five cents versus uh, sixty-eight. What is that? that? That goes in what? 10, 11, 12, 13 and a half. What is this? Is that six percent? Is that seven percent? Seven point three five. You know, almost seven and a half percent on the first class stamp. So you go put $100,000 on stamps, and on July 14th, you just made 7%. Now, the market for stamps, I guess, I'm guessing that there's a little bit of, of a problem there. But at 7%, and when's the next time they're going to raise stamp prices next year? <laughs> there's a, I, I'm guessing that they won't let somebody buy that many stamps at once. I bet there's some sort of a limit. You know, that's but a that's, great, uh, you know what, a great, what, a, what a great thought. What if you did that? Let's just say you did that, about 100000 today. Now, you can't sell, you know, on the 14th, okay, now it goes to 73. You probably should wait if you can wait till the next increase, right? And let's just say it goes to, I don't know, 80 cents. And then you're like, hey, I'll, I'll sell it to you for like 75 or 77, right? There you I mean, go. You can, there right? you go. You make a boatload. Yeah, well, you you got to find 10%. someone that needs $100,000 worth of stamps, but, you know. Well, just uh, make friends of a lot of uh, local post offices. I mean, I don't. Of course, I don't know. I, I guess the post offices get they get they get the stamps for free to sell to the customers. So I guess you can't sell it back to the post office. But I'm, there's there's got to be those uh, those those what uh, uh, are those little stores? They have the mailboxes and stuff, and they they do the shipping for you. You go in there, and they have to pay full price for the stamps because they just know that they're going to make their money back when they sell to the customers. But uh, you can go in there and say, hey, hey, I got here. You, you want to stock up on some stamps? Here you go. Wheeling, I got wheeling. the deal. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a pretty good percent. You know, 7%. Right? Keeps up with inflation, doesn't it? I mean, pretty soon. Why don't they just go to a dollar? Just stop kidding ourselves, right? Uh, how about this? Nigeria. Now the latest country to repatriate their gold to mitigate risk associated with a weakening U.S. economy. They made the decision, you know what? Yeah, I know you've been holding our gold for a long time. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to take it back. Economic in uh, indicators, rising inflation, escalating debt levels. Geopolitical tensions, uh, Nigerian policymakers worrying about the stability of the U.S. financial system said that they made the strategic choice to bring their gold home. Hmm. Wait a minute, aren't they going to BRICS too? Oh, I think they are.
800-951-0592. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back after. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour on this Tuesday. Uh, we're going to heat it up today. We'll probably heat something up tomorrow as well. But today, twenty dollar gold pieces. Liberties or Saints? I'll let you pick them. One through nineteen, twenty four ninety five. Twenty or more. Twenty four seventy five. So that ability to buy. Super close to spot here once again is upon you. 800 951 0592. So, uh, joining India, remember, India, India has been re- repatriating hundreds of tons of gold home. Now, Nigeria, the latest to say we're bringing the gold home. Reuters is reporting another central bank who. Wish to be anonymous. Said we did have our gold in London. We've transferred it back to our country to hold it as a safe half haven asset and to keep it safe. So at least that's at least the third country in just the last month that are saying we're bringing the gold home. If if it's my gold, then I want it in my country has been the mantra over the last several years. By the way, the World Gold Council continues to point out that more and more central banks said that they plan to keep their gold reserves within their own borders. Over 75% now of these nations are saying that, Jason, in 2020 it was only 50%. I promise you 20 years ago, it was probably less than 10. Everybody used to keep it in New York and London. But wait, there's more. There's more. This is, I don't know. But when you hear things like this, it makes me nervous. And you need to be worried about it. In March, Chairman Jay Powell refused to respond to how much gold was left in possession of our central bank. Fed officials also refused to comply with a Freedom of Information Act request. Investigative reporter Ken Silva, who filed the request with the Fed for reflecting how much gold the Federal Reserve Bank of New York currently holds in its vault, as well as reflecting uh, records the ownership state of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York's central bank government clients have in that gold following Powell's refusal to answer the question. The Freedom of Information Act response so far, Jason, has gone unanswered. And and that just, right, that's a credibility problem. Because obviously, if they had the amount of gold that I think Wall Street would like to believe they have, I think they would announce it, right? Why wouldn't they? Oh, we've got tons of it. But the fact that not only did they not want to answer the question, now they're refusing the Freedom of Information Act request, which means they're going to the court system and telling these judges, we can't say that. We can't tell them. Because if we tell them, that may cause harm. Well, let's see. Would it cause harm if they were holding hundreds of metric tons more? gold than people thought no no the only way it could really cause harm is if do do they have thousands of metric tons left less than what they have right there's 
really the only answer as to why you would not want to answer that question is because well, we really don't have any, you know, right? Or, or we have significantly less than what people think. Is it possible, Joe? Because uh, are you talking about the uh, United States holdings or the Federal Reserve holding it for the United States? This is different, right? This is the Federal Reserve holdings where governments have put their gold in possession of the Fed. So there's two things they want to know. Number one, how much do you have? How much is left? And then of what's left, who actually owns it, right? And, and, and we get the feeling, we, we've thought for a while that they've been relying or relieving the COMEX in London by lending gold to these exchanges to make good on contracts. And, of course, if they divulge that information, then the, then the traders would know, holy crap, right? There's... We, we, we've got, and I don't know the answer. Is it is it 100 metric tons, 1,000 metric tons, 5,000 metric tons short? I don't know. L- let me ask you this. What if the Fed is holding double or triple what it is supposed to be held? Would that cause a panic? Because they're holding so much. Think about it. If you go in there and audit it, it's like, wait a minute, you got like three times the gold you're supposed to have here. Wouldn't that, just as much as being short, cause a panic? It's like, well, if these guys are holding this much, what is what is going to happen? Why are they hoarding this much? I mean, during World War II, and actually, the depre- be, right. during the Depression, the before way, right? World War II started, uh, central central banks of, of different countries in Europe were, were detaching themselves from, from their, their currency, from gold. And then within just months, usually within months, half, if not three quarters of their gold had been sucked out of their their economies. And especially, like, America was one of the last ones to detach gold from the door to go into their bankruptcy in 1933. Everybody's catching their dollars and we're pulling that gold out of there. So, I mean, to me, Joe, I mean, it, maybe the, the, the reason you can't audit this thing is because short or heavy, it could be a problem. It could send the wrong mis- message. Well, I didn't think about heavy would mean, hey, these countries have been adding more gold without telling everybody, right? Yeah, you're right. It could go, could be either one of those. I guess it's not the same, right? I guess that's definitely not the choice. 800 951 and, you know, the plot thickens here uh, as the Federal Reserve is refusing a Freedom of Information Act request and now going through the court system to say, well, well gosh, we, we, we just can't tell you. We can't tell you how much gold there is. We can't tell you uh, if we have more gold. Less gold. I think Jason's probably right. I, I think it's less. That's just because yeah. I think that that most of the the gold that's there, I, I think, would be you know maybe we've got some of France's gold or Italy's gold or something like that, right? You know the G seven people. But it could be more, and more wouldn't be wouldn't be good either, right? Because that means even more central banks. Are buying gold, and, and it's it's a weird thing, right? It's, it's such a weird thing because no central bank has to disclose if they're buying it or not. But we have rules here that a Freedom of Information Act request two years. Okay, so let's just say I filed it today. They should be able to tell me at least in 2023. But no, Jason, they're saying no. We can't tell you. There's there's some legal I think there's some legal problems because the Fed's private the Freedom of Information Act is about government which we're supposed to be in charge of the people so the Fed say well we're private that's why they've always been able to shun a lot of this even though they're knee deep in government actually they're, they're neck deep in government uh, they say well we're private you know they they love the private thing when it suits them and then they like the uh, we're government when it suits them. Uh, you know, Joe, I, as a simple way of looking at this, if people really understood the, the kind of gold buying that these central banks, these countries are, are amassing, if you took the entire stock market and just classified all the money that's in it as a, a simple uh, 100 points, and as you watch the stock market, it's now at 110 points. Oh, there's 10%. If you look at it just simply that way, okay, for, for the stock market to double, it has to get to 200 points. If gold is five points, it's way down there. It's one twentieth. It's just it's way it's not worth as much. But if you take something that's five points and you add five more points, it's ten points. 
that's telling you a clear that's what's going on with gold it's a smaller place to put your money in. it's a smaller place but man when the buying gets hot you know 1900 gold which is kind of where it was sitting around last year before it started moving to 3800 gold is a much more likely situation not even a more likely it's going to happen versus what a uh, i don't know the stock market is what 38,000 joe whatever it is 30 uh you know, let's just go with uh 38 39,000 when do you think it's going to go to 78,000 does anyone think it's going to go to 78,000 what, what what kind of time frame are we looking at whereas gold at 3900 what what that could be next year and christmas time joe right that could be next that could be 2025 20, christmas time and and these banks if, if people understood the if people actually understood that the average guy walking the streets how much buying is going on they would speculate in gold it, you know speculates when you don't understand it people who don't understand gold they, they should be speculating in gold now until you learn it about it and then you'll just buy it confidently joe well i i'll just say this i think that's a everybody out there is going to be uh like these financial advisors uh, they, they've started figuring out, uh-oh, wait a minute. I may not quite understand it all, but I know the need to hold it now. $20 gold pieces. This is a great opportunity here. $24.95 by 20 or more. $24.75. Yeah, I call it $2,330. Bucks. I mean, that's nothing. All right before the end of the year, you're probably going to see gold over 2500 800 951 0592 Jason and I, we're coming right back with the happening.